the first art object I remember making, I took a cigar box and then I cut out pieces of paper, one for a head and one, two for arms and two for legs. And, and I thought about that cigar box as being Jesus and I put on a head and two arms and two legs on it. And then I took another piece of paper and I cut out squiggly things like this that I thought was intestines and then I put into the cigar box and closed it. And that was one of my uh, early works that ended up um, reflecting upon this, which has a little door in that opens up. <laughs> I'll show you. What the heck? You can see. So, I've, I've been fascinated with, with, you know, heads, arms, things coming out of box type of structures. There was an area called, underneath the furnaces, called the Checkers. And this was in the open hearth. And it was one summer, and I was a student at Carnegie Mellon at the time, and I worked for a summer in a steel mill. And so I was in a labor gang, open, open hearth labor gang. So we had to crawl into these Checkers, which are meant to preserve heat, you understand, from the furnaces, with a drill that had a, a chain on it. And it, it, would, it would chain like this and knock stuff off the bricks that were there to, make, to hold heat. Now, there were two gangs that did that, and each one took about 10 minutes. So one gang was in there working for 10 minutes, and they took them out, and they put you in. And you really had to take salt tablets so you wouldn't pass on because it was so hot. It was 90 degrees. It was the summertime outside, and it felt cool when you walked outside. It actually felt cool. But... When you're doing that in the checkers, it turns out that it was worse sitting there knowing that it's your turn to go in than it was being in there knowing that the time was running out for your stay in, in the checkers. Some aspects of mathematics do, does appeal to me. I really like calculus because, because calculus has to do with the notion of infinity and stirs up my imagination. Uh, but... Proving things, I can, I can deal with it for a certain amount, but I can't see my, see my life doing that kind of stuff. So that kind of shook me up. So I was already familiar with what I could do in art and what art was about. And, uh, but I never thought of it about it as a means of making a living. So here I was, here I was in mathematics now, and I flunked advanced calculus and trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I started going over to the Wednesday night sketching sessions over there. And I started looking around at what the students did. And there was one particular student who was very brilliant, who was, uh, actually his name was Steve Langfitt. And I was astounded by the drawings that he was doing. But nevertheless, it enticed me so much that I thought, boy, I, I need to get involved with this. So that's what I did. So I became a freshman again. And, and I was kind of an odd duck there because here I was, I was, I was the guy with the briefcase and the slide roll going into the fine art school, you know. And, uh, but it was absolutely fascinating to me. And in my, in my freshman year, um, I was doing better there than I was in, the, uh, in mathematics, actually. And besides, they were calling me Duane and talking about my artwork and how we should go this way and should go that way. And I just absolutely ate it up. This was for 3D design. And uh, it, was a, it was a project to use found materials. So what I did was I took um, uh, windshield wipers. I took windshield wipers and I bent them into this shape. And I took nylon stockings and I made the sculpture. I found objects. Now this was a similar idea. And again, this had to do with, with windshield wipers. So I have two windshield wipers here. And, uh, and then I stretch some canvas between the windshield wipers to emphasize the curve that was naturally happening between the windshield wipers. And I was fascinated by surrealism and doing imagery that I didn't understand. In other words, coming from my subconscious, and it didn't make sense to me. Now, this is in antithesis 
to mathematics, which is which you, you totally understand what you're doing, and you have to prove everything to even understand it even better. But this is like allowing things to happen on a canvas that are dreamlike, and you don't understand it. Back in my math program when I was there, I took a, I took a class in programming, and I didn't like it that much. It was okay, but I learned how to program basically. So, but when I started becoming a freshman again in art, then you know I said, you know, there's that there's a there, I found out there was a computer that was available. Just anybody can work with it if they liked. And we're talking about punch card computers. We're talking about you punching out on cards, stacking up cards in a box, hand it to somebody uh, that who's who's in who's wearing a white or light blue jacket behind a glass window in a air conditioned room with a computer. And that's what computers were. And you would hand a stack of cards in with your program, and then you'd you come back four hours later to pick it up and find out you made a typo. And then you have to retype that card, or two cards, whatever you made, made a mistake, put it back together again, hand it to the guy, and then four hours later, maybe it would work. So I started that, I started working with that kind of a process, and, uh, and you know, I kind of, kind of enjoyed it, but when I was in in mathematics. But after I got out of mathematics, um, I thought, you know, with computers, um, in a sense, I'm entertaining myself here with images that I can't predict and I'm putting together. I thought, maybe I can write computer programs that would entertain me as much as what I'm doing with my subconscious. So I started trying to program the computer to make art. Now, what was funny about that is that they were used to, in the computer center, of engineers doing writing pro doing problems and coming out with just text on a sheet of paper where here all of a sudden all of a sudden the computer stops typing on the printer and it thinks for a long time and then it goes and goes it does a line but it doesn't upspace the page and then it goes again right on top of the of the text so, in a sense, you would think that this is something that's broken, that maybe the printer isn't working right, because it does that four lines, but that's how I do tonality, was that I have N, an X, a Z, and I overprinted those on top of each other to make a solid or a gray tone in between and a lighter tone here, and start making pictures like that. And the head of the computer center said he wasn't happy with this. I mean, he stopped this stuff from happening. He says, this is not normal. And somehow I hooked up with, and I don't know how this happened, but I hooked up with uh, Dr. Herbert Simon, who was a professor there at the time, who was a Nobel laureate, but he was a professor in, 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 um, in basically in AI, artificial intelligence. He was a professor in psychology. He was a professor of the Graduate School of Industrial Administration, he got his doctorate in political science, and uh, he got his Nobel Prize in economics. So he was a, 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 a huge factor at the school. Um, he, was, he was writing programs to simulate Bach at the time. Uh, so he saw, he, he somehow he found out what I was doing. I may have gone to him and asked him, showed him some of the stuff that I was doing, see if he was interested at all. But he took me under his wing then, and then he started give me support for this and we had sessions once a week and I took class I got class credit for it and he also got me um also got it so that I got uh I got money during the summertime to do that there was enough money to pay for my tuition so I got a thousand dollars in the summertime to do this type of stuff oh yeah I threw I threw things away all the time uh what would it be I'll, I'll see what the results were and, um, and then I would evaluate that, re re change the program a little bit, and uh, try to try do better. Um, what, it, what, it, what it is, is trying to increase the probability of good things happening. See, that's what I was working on. 
So if I was noticing that it was drifting more toward bad things happening, then I would try to change the probability of that, of that happening.